Hi, Mariano Gomez, the Dynamics GP Blogster here. Welcome to my second video on Power Automate Robotic Process Automation with UI Flows and Microsoft Dynamics GP. In this video, you will see now how we can actually leverage Power Automate flows to execute a um, UI flow task. So let's see how it's done. So the last time we created a UI flow, in this case, uh, GP payables transaction entry. That particular UI flow would allow me to walk or enter a transaction in the payables transaction entry screen in Microsoft Dynamics GP. It recorded all the steps, allow me to do that. Now, back here in uh, Microsoft Flow, if I actually just um, go and click on my flows to get started, we'll then create a new flow and that flow in particular is going to be an instant flow from blank. So we're going to select instant flow from blank. Um, we're going to initially set up a manual triggered flow. So that's going to be the basis for this implementation. So we'll just give this a name, GP PM transaction entry. Select manual flow to get started and we'll click on create. Okay, once the design surface is up, We'll then add a few steps. Uh, for this, I'm going to create a set of new variables that are going to store the different elements of the UI flow. So I'm just going to look for variables here. And I'm going to actually initialize a variable. Uh, for this particular one, we're going to call it batch number. So um, my customary operation here is to just rename the actual task itself, and we're going to call it batch number. And um, that basically is a way of uh, ensuring that we know exactly what we're doing. So we're going to make that a string. I'm going to set up a new variable now. That variable is going to be then my vendor ID. And I'm going to look a, um, for initializing that variable as well. Uh, we're going to rename it. Just call it vendor ID. There we go. And uh, once we enter the name of the vendor, uh, the name of the variable itself, we're going to set that to be a string as well. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new variable. So once again, we're just going to go and click variables. No type in variables, I'm sorry. And then select initialize variable. We're going to call that. Um, again, this particular step we're going to call uh, document number or invoice number. And that's going to be our invoice number variable. Again, we're going to make that a string and just get new step. And finally, we're going to add the purchasing amount or invoice amount. And that's going to be another variable. And we're going to select to initialize the variable as well. And I'm going to rename it to purchase amount. And I'm going to type that variable name here. OK, this particular one, we're going to make a float. It's a, it's a numeric value. And the next thing we're going to go and do is we're going to actually uh, call the UI flow. With the introduction of UI flows, you now have a new step or a new action called UI flows action. And you can basically run a uh, flow that was a desktop flow. Or you can actually run a UI flow that is a um, web generated UI flow. So for this one, and if you remember, our previous step is a, um, a previous UI flow is a desktop flow. So I'm going to select it from the list, GP transaction entry. And now I'm able to map the different um, uh, dynamic content elements for each one of the UI flow inputs that we created. So as you can see, now we're passing 
the actual variables that we created to the UI flow that um, we set up. And that UI flow obviously has some different um, inputs. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new set of steps. And in that manual trigger flow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the different inputs that I want to create from that trigger itself. So yeah, I'm going to enter an input called batch number. And um, we're going to add a second one called vendor ID. That's also going to be a text. Subsequently, we're going to add the uh, document number. Once again, another text input. There you go, invoice number. And uh, finally, we're going to add a number element for the um, purchase amount. There we go. So once we're done with these, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set each one of my variables to the um, input elements from the manual trigger. So there we go. We match vendor ID. We're going to look for the vendor ID field here. So that should be at the very bottom. Let's scroll down a little bit. Here we go. And then um, we're going to match the invoice number. And the reason I'm doing this is because for my third video, I'm going to use AI Builder, and I'm going to want to actually pass that content in from Power Apps. So uh, that's how that's going to work. So here we've matched all our different dynamic content elements from the manual trigger into our variables. Then now we're going to save this and test it out. So once it's saved, I'm going to click here on Test. And I'm going to perform this trigger manually. I'm going to save and test that again. And now I'm asked to sign in. Actually, I can hydrate that connection to the UI flow if I want to. So as long as you have a green uh, button, that's probably OK. So we're just going to continue here. And now I'm going to enter the batch number. Let's call this, for example, uh, flow demo. And I'm going to enter the vendor ID. I think I'm going to use advanced, advanced 001. There we go. And then um, we're going to type in the invoice number. And for this, I can use INV30555, some arbitrary number. And uh, finally, I'm going to enter the purchase amount and hit run flow. Just to confirm, I'm going to go over to my Dynamics GP application. And I'm going to see if the vendor ID is effectively advanced or advanced. Then we can go back and. Um, make sure that we enter the correct vendor ID during the um, the data entry process. So I'm going to click on Run Flow, and if everything works, then I should see my Dynamics GP application data entry begin using UI Flow. So we'll wait here for a second. Okay, so clearly something did not work. We're going to go to the flow run page and check the action itself. So we saw that uh, that flow failed, and it failed precisely on the UI flow desktop. So we probably got some um, HTTP status back, in this case, a 400, and a simple body that says there's an error. Now, that could be probably attributed to the fact that I didn't really um, hydrate the connection, per se. I probably should have clicked on those ellipses button to refresh that connection. So let's go and see if we can just simply um, rerun this at some point, um, just making sure that everything is OK here in Dynamics GP. And um, go up once more. And if anything, all I'm going to do is validate, make sure that everything looks OK besides the step, make sure my headers are OK. Um, and if I don't see anything new, then I'm just going to click on resubmit to resend this particular one. So I'm just going to close this details page and click on resubmit here. And uh, I just hit OK. And hopefully this time we'll get it to work. 
There we go. So here comes Dynamics GP. And now I can see that my flow is working. And remember that my flow calls that uh, UI flow. So now it's creating the batch. We can see here that we can go back to the payables transaction entry window. Now I should type in the vendor that I uh, selected. There we go. And then the document number and the purchase amount. Remember that those fields were captured during my UI flow. So now that flow has completed. And effectively, they should turn green in a couple seconds once the control is passed back to the actual uh, Power Automate flow. There we go. So as you can see, this was a very cool way to um, automate that UI flow from Microsoft Flow, where I could actually see now that there is a status of 200, which means that the flow completed successfully. We can go back to GP now and see if the transaction is there. There we go. So that's the transaction that was created with the UI flow. You can see all my field elements are in place and I can save this transaction, close this window. And thank you very much for watching. This was um, a really cool segue into my third video, which uh, is coming up sometimes next week. So enjoy this one and talk to you soon. Yeah.